we're going to be doing on the extended session today is roughly this agenda. We're going to see how much we get through. There's no uh, pressure to get through everything. And what this is really supposed to do is give you a flavor of some of the things uh, to get started on for getting your open source project ready for design contributions. So you definitely will feel like some of the uh, the tasks within this extended session, you're going to want more time to work on them, but I'm going to keep them really short so that you get a flavor of lots of different things that you can do uh, to get ready, right? The tools that we're using, we're using Hopin at the moment. Uh, we're going to be using something called Miro for, it's like a collaborative work board for all of us to use. Uh, the link is uh, on the screen at the moment, but I also put it in the chat at the top. So you should be able to find that. It does not require you to log in in any way. You can collaborate anonymously, but it does help if you sign up for an account because then, you know, I can see the name of a cursor. But if you don't want to do that, you absolutely do not have to. We're going to test whether using Jitsi rooms for group discussions works when you're working on your tasks in groups. And obviously we've got some uh, GitHub uh, examples, uh, examples of open source projects from GitHub that we are going to be looking at. Again, don't need a GitHub uh, account if you don't have one, um, but we're going to be, uh, there's a few GitHub links to different projects that I've offered as an example of ones that you can work on during this session. The other things that we can use uh, as well, um, before I knew that there was a really robust, robust chat feature here, um, I have a open design Slack channel that we could do use could have used for communicating in groups. It's really up to you within your groups whether you prefer using Jitsi. Jitsi should, should hopefully work reasonably well uh, for the groups and the discussions. But if you really do struggle, there is that fallback to use that Slack. But you will, I will need to invite you and add you on there. And the last one on this slide is I have a whereby room that I have in the background. I am trying to use my whereby room, which is another video chat function that's used in the browser and you don't need to sign in or log in. But I'm using that to try and simulate that thing that happens in workshops or in conferences where you might want to come up to the you know, facilitator and ask them a question you might not want the rest of the room to hear. So that room is there for that specific reason that if somebody wanted to approach me, ask the question and try and figure something out. Um, with me, then they can ask in that room and I could uh, join your Jitsi room for your group to try and help you through that task. So we're going to see whether that works. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but let's give it a go, right? Okay. The agenda is we're going to look at, we're going to do some introductions. We're going to do a little bit of talking first. Uh, we're going to form some groups from the attendees here. Then we're going to look at the essential design documentation and labels for your repos, uh, your open source projects. And then we're going to look at something which we call a design challenge versus an issue, which is created from an issue in an open source repo. Then we're going to look at understanding design activities. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about something called witnesses, and then we're going to finish which is going to be super sad because I'll miss talking to everyone. So when I was thinking about how to construct this session, I was thinking about different things that I could do to try and make this smoother, make this work for everyone, given that this is a new format for all of us, really, or most of us. I'm going to try to remember these things. One is to pause for five seconds before moving on to the next slide, just in case anyone is writing anything down, taking screenshots, uh, or maybe just you know wants to spend a little bit longer reading what's on the screen. I'm gonna pause for maybe up to 10 seconds if it contains a link that you need to open and use for the tasks. I'm going to try and read out and explain all the slides content when working across different windows and different screens. I'm going to try and pay good attention to the chat here on Hopin. Uh, I'm going to try and add in some extra comfort breaks, even though we've got scheduled breaks. Uh, one hour and 45 is quite a long time. Um, so I'm going to try and work in some comfort breaks. Uh, but we will have task uh, sections within the extended session where as long as your group are happy, you can, you know, 
go for a bathroom break, grab some water, do, do whatever you need to do in those, in those um, times. I've made the slides available uh, on a drive link. So if anything goes wrong, your internet goes down, you want to catch up, you want to read up, that should be available for you. And then if you have any other suggestions, like making sure I'm not covering the mic from my laptop as I'm trying to talk, then please uh, add them into the chat and I'll try and facilitate them as best I can. So we're going to be quite collaborative within this session. It's going to be hopefully really fun. If you'd like to open this link on your computers, uh, it's going to maybe be challenging for some people. I don't know what everyone's setup is like. Multiple tabs might get quite hard to manage, but please uh, bear with me and try, try and open up this link on your machines. It's in the top of the chat. If you want to just click a link and have it open. And I'm just going to move to my tab to see whether people are joining. Cool, I've got four people. So what you should see is a board, a sort of browser based kind of work board with a lot of different stuff on it, some colored boxes some text and things like that. This is a tool called Miro. There are a few tools like it. Um, sadly, it's not open source, but hey, hey, hey. Um, but what you can do is you can zoom out and you can zoom in. Uh, and we're going to be working through each of these sections throughout this, this session. So you're going to want to stay, keep that tab or that window open as we, as we go through the session. So the first thing that we're going to do in the board that we've got is we are going to go to the section where we're going to write down our names and we're going to do this kind of icebreaker, which is, so if you go to the names and skills section, and I'm just going to show you where that is on my screen as well. <laughs> Ooh. A few moments while I, always the way when you test things before they work perfectly fine. And then when you, when you try them again, things get a little bit harder. Here we go. So we want to be in the section that says names and skills. And we're going to want to add in our name in the text section here. In the section with pink, you're going to want to write a skill that you're comfortable with, something that you do every day almost, something related to open source, if, if, you, if you can. Then we've got a skill you'd like to share with another person. So it could be the same skill that you're comfortable with, um, or it could be something else that you also enjoy doing and you'd love to share with another person. And then we've got a section which is a skill you'd like to learn more about. So maybe it's something that you don't do enough of already or something that you've always wanted to learn. So you can see my examples here. A skill I'm comfortable with is UX design. I would love to share with other people how to work with brands to build user interfaces, Yeah, how to use a brand and build user interfaces from that. And something I always want to learn more about is DevOps, if you can believe, if you can believe that. Um, and then the last section that we've got here is uh, if you want to add in a open source project, a link to an open source project that you either maintain, own, or work on at the moment. So I'm going to give some time for the room to work on that. Ah, no, no worries, Brian, don't worry. Uh, so if I reshare my tab, uh, my browser, just two seconds. Okay, here we go. So 
you if you zoom all the way out on this tab here you'll see that there's lots and lots of things in it and if you find the section which says names and skills ah cool awesome glad you got it and uh the way that you can edit the text you either use the the text tool in the um sidebar or you can double click on the existing text here and uh change change the sample text that i put in there it'll take some while to get used to something new like this if you haven't used these kinds of things before but this is actually a tool that quite a few designers are now using to try and do online versions of the things that they often do in person using lots and lots of post-it notes. Now they're using virtual post-it notes. So I'm going to give us another two minutes to fill these things out. And I'm noticing we've got around 12 people in the room at the moment, which seems like it might be two two groups of people at the moment so i wasn't quite sure how many people we'd get but it looks like we've got two two groups at, at the moment roughly but we'll see we'll see who adds their names on on the miro board okay so we've got one two three and one two That's, um, Good stuff. Am I pushing you out of your comfort zones already with, with using Miro? You're already doing design work, so <laughs> whoever whoever hasn't done this kind of stuff before, I, I hope that it's as interesting as it is frustrating. <laughs> So I'm just reading reading some of the things that you you all have put in here. Uh, we've got we've got uh, one other person that's into user experience design. We've got a few coders and software developers and programming. We've got some people that do ooh, wants to share usability testing. People are going to absolutely jump on that opportunity for that skill share, Abby. <laughs> Excellent, good stuff. Okay. And we've got one project in there, which is the Open Design Project. Thanks, cool. Uh, and oh, we've got Open Sourced as a project. Um, uh, Jim, I, I kind of expect you to by the statement I surely do, there might be not enough space within this within this section for maybe all the projects that you contribute to. So that might be uh, a limitation. <laughs> so um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that we've got the people that are participating uh, in this. Um, anyone that's watching, you know, at any point you can jump into one of those groups, um, or you can add your names in these in these sections, or you can just sit and absorb the the information. Uh, there is absolutely no pressure to be in the work board. Okay, so so these are good. These are basically going to be our groups now. So we've got we've got two groups. Uh, we've got a group uh, in the top section there with three people at the moment and then we've got a group in the bottom section there uh, with two people at the moment so we're going to use these as our two groups when we work on the further tasks 
And if anyone who is absorbing and listening uh, wants to join in one of those groups, Gypsies chat, just to hear what they're saying and hear how they're working through the tasks, then they can do that. But we'll also have an opportunity for, uh, we're gonna see what we can do as a, a feedback to the room kind of way of doing things. I think that we might be able to do that within Hopin here. Okay. So back to, back to slides. Okay, so that was a bit of uh, activity to get you ready, ready to be working in the work board. Thank you very much for, for, for doing that. I'm happy that we've got some participation. I wanted to talk a little bit about the open design project uh, as a whole and why I'm here and why I'm talking about this subject. So back in 2018 uh, and 2019, I was working for an organization called Ushahidi. Ushahidi makes a number of different open source and not open source humanitarian tools. And I was working as a designer there. And I was very uh, privileged really to be working at an organization that makes open source as, as, its, as, its, as its function. But as I was working there, uh, we were working on design tasks within an open source repo. And I was looking and seeing you know, developers contributing to the open source. And I was there working as a designer contributing to this open source, but as a, as a paid member of staff. And I asked myself, why aren't there designers doing this same process? You know, I'm here, I'm working, but you know, where are the, where are the people like me that are interested in the projects, uh, like the open source projects that are out there, you know, participating in this, in this kind of community? And I found it really interesting and really quite sad that there wasn't more uh, involvement and more participation from, from designers in open source. And I very much wanted more designers to be working with me as open source contributors as I was working on a tool. So in 2018, uh, we had conversations with an organization called Designit, who are a global design agency, and they were interested in this problem that we were having or this, this conversation we were having internally about how do we get designers contributing or how do we encourage it. Design It uh, created for us a design jam or a hackathon really uh, on one of our open source tools and invited a room full of designers in Berlin to work on this tool. And we were like, that's super cool. You know, we've never kind of seen things like that before. You know, we know design jams happen, but how do they happen when, when there's an open source tool and there's kind of contributions that could happen afterwards? And, you know, how do, how do these things work, you know, when, when you're engaging with something that already exists and already has a community contribution framework around it? And some other organizations heard what we were doing. One of them was Adobe. And Adobe were primarily interested because at Ushahidi, we as designers were using one of their tools to create design work. And that was uh, the tool Adobe XD, which is a prototyping tool for designers to make prototypes. Sadly, not open source. So we all sat down and had a conversation together and decided that we wanted to try and figure out how to solve some of these problems about designers participating in open source and how to encourage that. And Adobe funded the first phase of this, uh, this project of open source uh, design contributions called Open Design and Design It supported us throughout that project as well. So the combination of all of these organizations created the project of Open Design. So what is actually Open Design? What does Open Design do? Uh, open Design looked at primarily ways for designers to tackle big societal problems by contributing to humanitarian open source software, which was Ushahidi software at the time, which is what we used as a pilot to test how to engage designers. And we'd seen this need across many, many different communities uh, for design uh, in lots of different spaces, uh, not just uh, humanitarian open source, but all open source. And we wanted to create we wanted to research and we wanted to understand things better and we wanted to test different things, but we also wanted to create something tangible as best we could. So we wanted to create a set of methods and tools, examples, workshop frameworks, and we wanted to importantly do events where we engaged designers on open source 
problems and worked through open source contributions with them. And for a lot of these designers in these conferences and at these events that we were organizing and participating in, it was the first time that they'd really begun to understand what open source really could be beyond the things that are popularized in open source kind of out there in the, the ether, right? They really started to understand that open source wasn't just things in the terminal, wasn't just development frameworks, wasn't just for developers and did a lot of other things that they could really, really benefit contributing to. Uh, so we used uh, one of Ushahidi's tools as our first pilot project to test this, this project with the open design project. And I need to go into a little bit of detail about the tool that we use, the open source tool that Ushahidi created that we used as a pilot. And it's called 104. And it's called an emergency check in for teams. So what does emergency check in for teams mean? Ushahidi historically has done a lot of work in the crisis and disaster response space. Ishihidi has a lot of history in providing open source tools for people that want to respond to disasters and crises globally. And one of the tools that we created after a terrorist attack was the tool 104. And what it was trying to solve was this problem of when you're in a crisis, it's really difficult to get in contact with people that you want to know whether they're safe or not. And you might email some people, you might text some people, you might message some people in other ways. And you have to go through that process of trying to you know, check your texts for this person, check your email for this person and try and find out whether everyone's okay. And what Thor did was fix that uh, dis, uh, dissemination, you know, the, the fragmented way that we communicate. And it tried to centralize it to some extent in a domain a 104 domain that you would have for your organization where you could send out one message to multiple platforms and receive messages back via whichever platform somebody wanted to respond in and see really quickly and easily who was okay. Uh, and this is all open source now, which is excellent um, through the open design project. So it started off as a closed source project and became open source through the open design project. And I talk really briefly about what 104 does because some of the examples that I use are around open design and doing open source design contributions. Use 104 as an example. And it's kind of hard to understand the examples that I'm using if you don't kind of understand what open uh, what uh, 104 kind of does and some of the key things that make up that product. So um, the four key things that I think you really need to know about 104 as a product, as an open source product, is that it's a web app. It works across different devices. It has like a domain URL, kind of like a Slack. Um, so company name org sends out different messages via different methods. And those messages are typically called a check in. Uh, and it sends them out through SMS, voice call, email and in application messages. And 104 has multiple different user types. So there are people that own a domain, administrators, people that can send messages, and people that can read messages only. There are other, you know, tiers and other details that make up the complex product that is uh, 104. But these are the key things you need to know uh, to use some of the examples that we we are going to refer to. So. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to form our teams. Uh, what we really want to be looking for when we form teams is we want to be looking for a mix of different skills. So uh, we've got people on the Miro board at the moment that uh, have put their different skills down. And this is really the first thing that this uh, extended session is looking to teach you is uh, a way of finding out different skills that people have, different skills that people are interested in, uh, to try and construct the teams that would uh, you you would form to try and solve uh, open source uh, challenges or open source issues within the open design framework. So what we've got, I think, 
at the moment. I think we've got two different teams. Uh, and what we what I want to make sure is clear within the next uh, few minutes is that each group need to um, either pick one of the example open source projects that I've listed, or you can choose to work on one of the open source projects that you yourselves maintain or you've brought and added into that section on the Miro board. Uh, because uh, what is really important is if you're not using 10.4 as an example, it needs to be a uh, open source project that you're comfortable with and that is going, you're going to get value from, from working on these, these tasks from. So you can either choose one of the examples that we've got and I can work with the teams or we, you can work on an open source project that you've already, you already work on uh, now. But within your groups, you should agree what you want to work on and whoever maintains or owns or works on that project there is going to be slightly more pressure on yourself because you'll understand the project uh, better uh, than maybe other people that are not part of the project so uh, let's uh, switch to let's switch to the mirror board again and make sure that we're getting in our teams okie dokie so at this point, what I'd like uh, you folks to do, so let's let's just check the team. So we've got Donald and Abigail, we've got Brian and Jim, and I think that that is the everyone that we've got within this. So um, we've got two teams of two people, which is totally fine. Um, what I'd like you to do is on my screen at the moment, what you should see is a Jitsi link next to group number one. That is the Jitsi link for Abby and Donald. And the for Brian and Jim, you've got a Jitsi link of uh, the group number two to be able to have discussions amongst yourself about the upcoming tasks. So if you want to make sure that you have uh, the Jitsi uh, rooms open so that you can both discuss uh, amongst yourselves, uh, the next, the upcoming tasks. Okay, so I just wanna go very quickly through some of the examples that I've got uh, that you could work on. So I've got a few links in the Miro board as well, but on the screen at the moment on my slides, I've picked out a few different example open source projects that you could decide to work on. We've got the 10.4 project, which is the Ishihidi 10.4 project, the Pali uh, project, we've got Hikaya, uh, we've got Chain HQ, uh, their project Little Window, we've got Leaflet, which is Leaflet JS, and we've got the Piscal app as well. So if you don't have an open source project you already want to work on, you can pick one of these. And I've got issues uh, further into the extended session, but it's completely up to you which ones you want to work on whether you want to bring, bring your own or whether you want to work on one of these examples. So you have your Jitsi links for each of your, your groups to talk with your team. Uh, so I feel like this is the best way for you as individual teams to discuss what you, the tasks that are coming up. And the last thing to say is within your teams, if you can, as you discuss using voices, uh, see what you can do to document what is being decided. Even if it's very quick notes, oh, we decided to do X, you can either use the mirror board or you can use a notes stock if you prefer. But there is space in the mirror board to write in your notes. But documentation is very important. So the task format, just to cover what we're doing, uh, we're going to do a little explanation by me. Then there's going to be group discussion where there's going to kind of be silence in the hop in. Uh, and then there's going to be a feedback to the room, hopefully. We're going to see how we facilitate that. Uh, you can at any point, the people that are working on the tasks, at any point head into the, my whereby room to ask me questions if you need things clarified by me. So I have my whereby room open and ready to listen to any uh, anybody's clarifying questions that they might have. Ooh. Okay. Is me managing multiple screens. <laughs> okay, so the first task. The first task that we have, just make sure that you spend anything from five to 10 minutes in your Jitsi rooms 
Uh, talk about the open source project that you want to think about when you're doing your tasks and have a quick uh, read to understand that project if you're choosing one that you don't already know and work with. If you've got one that you already know and work with, share some understanding of what that open source tool project does. Have a think about what the role is that you want to play. So thinking back to the uh, task that we did where we wrote down our names and our skills that we have, what we want to share and what we want to learn more about. One of the things that's excellent about doing design related tasks is you could take on a different role. So you can take on a designer's role if you'd like to. And you need to you can then say that for these tasks, I am playing the design role and I am practicing my design skills uh, for this role. And you could uh, likewise, somebody that's design related could practice being a development person and thinking in the development mindset. This is really weird sometimes but it's very important to attempt to get into the mindset of okay what would a designer say uh, when we're thinking about this so see see what roles you feel comfortable in but have a think and explore about uh, how you could uh, inhabit another role you might if there were bigger groups you might want to pick somebody that could facilitate discussions uh, and oh okay sure sure jim yeah, you can you can all move to one group. I think Brian might want to move to the group number one then, if you're heading out halfway through. No worries. Um, it can also be done solo. These tasks can be, can be done solo. You don't have to do them in the group, but it's good to promote the discussion. And then you might want to pick somebody to do some documentation and work on the Miro board. So. For now, I'm going to mute myself on pop in and I'm going to go into the Jitsi rooms and I'm going to have a chat with some of the folks in their Jitsi rooms to see how they're getting on.
we're doing multitasks of different video rooms here, different video rooms here. We're trying things out and it's very, very cool. So we've got a group working on live open, open source project at the moment. So we're going to be going with that one. It's a project called Open Sourced. If you want to drop the link to it in the hop in chat, that would be absolutely amazing if people, uh, other people wanted to check out the project that, that we're doing this design, uh, these design tasks on. Um, so uh, what we're going to work on now is a section which is about sensors and Um, sorry, sorry about covering the mic. So we're going to talk about documentation. We're going to talk about labels. The framing for this is something that we learned throughout the open design project was that designers in general, whether or not they know about open source yet or not, is they really want to work on a project for good. And it's my firm understanding that pretty much every open source project contributes in some way to something for good. If it's making dev tools more accessible, if it's allowing you know, a new way of doing something uh, within a certain tool set, then it's doing something for good. There are more, there are other open source projects that like do more clear stuff towards like humanitarian good. But what we really found out was that designers are typically driven by what is the meaning of me contributing to this and what kind of good am I doing by adding my, my value to this? It's like a real big driver for them. So I want to talk about the readmes of uh, repos and, and of, of projects. So what the first task is, is looking at is uh, working on your readme and how you include design as an explicit section within your readme documentation. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of different examples. Um, we're going to work on how you might start to include that design section in your readme of your repo, or how you might rework it if it already exists. So we've got a link there at the moment. Uh, I can drop it in the chat as well, so that it's a little easier to for people to get to. And this is uh, the design contributions uh, section of the 10.4 repo that I wrote for encouraging design contributions. So this one's a little bit more large and ambitious, but it's a good, good one to look to as an example if you're keen. So what we've got, and here's a screenshot of that link, is a section about contributing to design as an open source contributor for Temp4. Um, what we've got here is a short explanation of how we've created the design for Temp4, if it has got design already. So every project will have some kind of design, whether it's how you've written your copy or text or how you've incorporated some kind of visuals. There's going to be some kind of existing design, even if it's how you structure the words that display in your terminal window. That's still part of the design process is how to make that the most usable part of whatever you're building. So including a section of saying, this is what we've done already, here it is, here's where you can access screenshots of this and here's where you can access any existing uh, design information or design uh, examples. So here's where it is already. One of the tricky things about design, and you can perhaps see towards the bottom of this slide uh, where I'm uh, waving my cursor, is uh, design doesn't have, design files uh, don't have great versioning. And if you include them within a readme like this, uh, you don't inherently get some kind of versioning of your design files. One way that I found to work around that is to just include a time and date stamp within the readme text as well. So moving on from 10.4 as an example, I am referring now to the Pali project uh, within uh, their, their project. And they've put in the section here, uh, an explicit section for designers. And they're asking, we need help. We haven't had a lot of attention, but we're interested in it. And here's what we've got already. So here's a project that's already making an attempt at saying, we want to invite more of this, but we're not 
quite sure how to ask and we're not quite sure how to develop this. So this is a really good example for how to start uh, if you're not sure uh, what exactly you need to put in there, even just the intention of saying, please come and you know help us out even with what we want to ask for. It's a great start. So what we're going to do now is in the in the group that we've got for the project that has been set, we're going to think about what we're going to include in the design readme. If there's already a design readme, it's useful to bring it up at the moment and share it within the group. But if there's not, think about how to answer these questions. So how can you invite design contributions? And what kind of supporting info do you have already that you can offer designers? And what kind of asks do you have of designers? And how can you appeal to that fact that I said earlier that we learned through the Open Design Project where designers want to work on projects for good as a focus? So thinking about how you can communicate what your project does in that kind of sense of oh this project does this for these people help us do this for these people how do you want to uh, how do you want to explain that to the designers that are interested so team team in your jitsi room have a have a think about how to answer these questions i'm going to put myself on mute in the hop in uh we're going to work within the mirror board as well to make sure we document it and then in probably just under 10 minutes time, we're gonna come back into the room and hopefully we're gonna have the team feedback on what they've come up with. This, this is very true. So you might get a little bit of feedback in the Jitsi room. So hopefully everything, hopefully everything is reasonably easy to hear. So what we've got at the moment, folks, in the hop in is we've got one, we've got one group working on a open source project. Uh, we are going to take a look at the open source project now. And we're going to see whether they have a design readme in here. And then we're going to work on that. So it looks like looks like there's some visuals in here for for a start, which is always good. At the very least, uh, you get a little bit of an understanding for how it looks. And we've definitely not got anything to do with design contribution specifically, but we've got a contributing uh, dot markdown. So let's take a look. Always leave screenshots of visual changes. That's a good thing for designers to know, but it could be added into a design section, uh, a design specific contribution section. Um, and we've got no specific, we've got no specific section for designers, which is, which is totally fine to be expected for most projects. So 
the group uh, that I'm working with at the moment, uh, we're going to answer some of these questions together. And I can hear you from the, the Jitsi room. Um, but what we could do is we could uh, take this to the hop-in if you think that, if we, if we prefer that. Okay, so uh, I think if you can go into the hop in um, and if you're able to join the session from the hop in, can you see uh, like an ability to join the hop in to, to join like the voice chat or not? Because I want to make sure that that's available because if it's not, we can't, we can't, we have to do this through Jitsi. Uh, 